It's been nearly six years that we bought this neglected farmhouse in France and turned our lives upside down and moved our family here to the countryside of Burgundy. And since then, we've been doing endless renovations and improvements and turned this into the family home that is everything and more we have always dreamed of. We're in a small village. We're surrounded by meadows full of wildflowers, farm fields with friendly cows and sheep, quietly grazing and looking at me as if they're saying, it's okay, just slow down and breathe. We fall asleep and wake up to the bird song and sounds of nature coming from the forest behind our house, which offers an ever-changing scenery with the change of the seasons. And we really do feel that this is home. I remember when I was in my 20s and when I studied French that I was always dreaming what if I could one day live in a farmhouse in the beautiful countryside of France and somehow it was always this thing that would never ever be within my reach. I really really don't take where we live and how we live for granted but in the hectic hustle of everyday life with a family and running a business we would almost forget to stand still and remind myself that I'm here in this magical place that I've always dreamed of and honestly thought wasn't something that I could ever achieve. The funny thing is, even though we live in the middle of nature, I still feel the desire sometimes to leave this piece of paradise as my soul yearns to be in nature, but away from the distractions, worries and everyday chores that we have at home. And so we left our home for a few days as a family to explore the Auvergne region which is the most untouched and environmentally protected region of France. It is breathtakingly beautiful.
We felt truly grateful and spent some quality time together because building and renovating a house like this is such an intense project that sometimes you have to walk away from it, take a little distance so you can see clearly how you want to continue. I also wanted to thank all of you for your wonderful comments on the video that I posted last week where I did the very simple and quick tour of our house and many of you have asked questions which I would like to answer in this one. Many of you have asked where our bedrooms and our boys' bedrooms and bathrooms are. They are upstairs of the holiday cottage and I haven't really shown these. We like to keep them private. As you know, we never show our boys on the internet. They don't want to, we don't want to, and I'm definitely not going to show their rooms. But we do have a video of when we finished, which is our current bedroom, but it's actually the guest room. Um, and I do have a video that I'll link up here so you can look at that. It gives you a little feel for what the upstairs looks like. Many of you also wanted to know how big our plot is or how much land we have. It's not something that I am very interested in, to be honest, because I always need to look it up <laughs> when people ask that question. So I just looked it up for you. It is a little under 10,000 square meters, which I believe is a little under 2.5 acres and that is the land that the house sits on as well as the farm field part of that big farm field behind the house where the cabin sits that is ours as well and then there is a bit of land on the other side of the small road so yes that big field that you see behind the house where the cabin sits that is ours as well we rent it to a local farmer he uses it to make hay for the cows People have also asked where the second cabin will be. Well, that is going to be on this same farm field, but then way on the other end of it where we made the parking. Our plans really are to have a bigger vegetable garden. We now have a small piece of our garden that we use to grow some food, but we want to have a much bigger vegetable garden and the second cabin will be on the other side of that vegetable garden so we kind of have a vegetable garden in between the parking and where that cabin will be and this kind of ties into what future plans we have one of the questions was what are your plans for the old part of the house we're just basically going to turn that into our living room a very spacious living room um, it will kind of feel like an evening salon, I think, or a winter salon because the big kitchen that we've created, which we recently finished, it has everything we need. We can sit there comfortably on the sofas that are there and um, it will have um, a wood-fired stove that we can cook on, but it will also heat the place. We have underfloor heating. So basically that would be enough for our family, just that one big space. But since we have the old part and we want the entire house to be at a certain level of comfort and just structurally okay, we are going to finish that part of the house and then turn it into a really big family room since we have more and more family visiting. And uh, yeah, we just have this wonderful feeling of this being a home that everybody in our family loves to come visit and when our boys leave the house which they will at some point that they this is the place that they will always want to return to and not come because they need to see mom and dad but you know really have this genuine feeling of i want to spend some time there so that is what we're going to do with the old house and it will have our offices on the uh, on the first floor
people also asked if we have any plans to get more animals and whether we have more pets than just to get. Well, the truth is we never planned on having any pets, but uh, especially since my husband is very allergic, but we found Tigret, um, I believe it was early 2021. We found her in the streets here. She was just dumped by somebody in, in our village, not somebody from our village, but somebody just dumped her here in our village, hoping that she'd be found. I mean, this is what we all assume happened. And yeah, she was very, very skinny, uh, malnourished. She was really um, very sick as well. Um, so we found her and she kind of clinged to us, clinged to us, is that the word? And, uh, and she just kind of asked to be um, taken in the family. So we just fell in love with her, with her soul. It was so clear to me that she was really meant to be with us. I really don't like cats, to be honest. I'm always a little scared of them even. So it's really bizarre. I found her in the street. She came walking up to me and she just made this very clear soul to soul connection. That's the only way I can describe it. I looked at her and I was like, you are meant to be with us. And I've never had that with any animal. So we took her in, everybody loves her now. Olaf miraculously does not have any allergic reaction to her. He does to any other cat and most dogs. So she was just meant to be with us. And we have considered chickens and we, I mean, I'd love to have this real homestead, but I also do know that I find all the things that we're doing and need to do already quite overwhelming, to be honest, all the work that's to be done. So I don't think adding a lot of extra work is going to really make me happy. So for now, we basically plan on finishing the house. And then when that's finished, we want to build a bigger vegetable garden and a second cabin. And that's already quite a lot, I think, to to look forward to and uh, overwhelming enough in itself. So we tend to not look too far ahead in the future and just stay in the moment, stay very present and follow what feels right for this moment. So I guess that's it. Thank you all again so much for being here, for watching this video. And yeah, I hope to see you in the next video. Have a wonderful week.